can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. Many choose to take the blue pill to have security, happiness, beauty, and the blissful ignorance of illusion, a beautiful prison living in confined comfort without want or fear within a simulated reality. Others, though, choose the red pill. Knowledge, freedom, uncertainty, and the brutal truths of reality. Living the truth of reality is so much harsher and more difficult. That system is our enemy. When you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. The false reality of the Matrix was designed to keep people from knowing the truth. People carry on with their lives, oblivious to the fact that everything they have based their lives on has been a deception. Sound like the stuff of science fiction, right? Sound completely unbelievable. How could our military possibly be using those in future warfare? Guess what? We've just had a recent breakthrough, more great test results that are making lasers a reality. So it's called Athena. Lockheed Martin makes it, and they've been doing a lot of the pioneering in this laser field. Now, what's really exciting about it is that it's so hard to harness that much power and make it compact enough that it's actually going to make practical sense downrange. And they've proven that they can do that. Uh, recently, uh, they tested it against five moving drones, so realistic drones that they might go up against, with, uh, you know, enemy forces might send against us, for example, uh, or terrorists might send against us. Uh, and it successfully shot down all five of the drones. This is this is huge news because it means that in a realistic practical setting it's looking very promising so it could be ready to field quite soon. So when you see the movies or you look at comic books or television shows, when you see the laser weapons, they tend to be a color, right? Red or green or something like that. Uh, real lasers, one of the key advantages that they provide is that they are invisible. You actually can't see them. You just see this damage suddenly starting to blow something up. Uh, so if we take a look now at what the Athena did to a truck. So we're looking at a truck engine and the Athena within seconds was able to beam right in there, heat the whole thing up, and burn through the engine of this vehicle. So if you, imagine if you were in that vehicle, all of a sudden, this hole would start appearing in your engine, and the whole thing would just disappear. That's what these lasers do. Now, there's some other key advantages that we should mention. Let me give you three of them. One, unlimited ammo. As long as we have power, we have an unlimited magazine. And downrange, of course, having unlimited ammo can be a huge advantage. Second, it's silent. We don't give the enemy any advance warning that it's coming. And then the third one I wanted to touch on is that it travels at the speed of light. So not only are we delivering powerful, 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 decisive effects, lethality, we're also doing it so rapidly they don't know what hit them. So if you could circle back to that example of being in the car again, that would happen so instantaneously within seconds, you truly would have no idea what was happening. It would just suddenly start disintegrating, right? So what can we use these against? So we talked about the vehicle a bit. We talked about how Athena has just proven itself against drones. But in the real world application, our forces could use it against the drones. We could use it against aircraft. Uh, we could use it against vehicles on the ground, like we mentioned. Uh, we could also use it against fast exciting applications for this technology. There's no longer science fiction, but science fact. Without the things that I've just told you to prepare yourself with, that's about as much good as it's going to do you. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is the age of deception. And we have been deceived and manipulated and lied to since the beginning 
of the dawn of human history. You, then you know what you're looking for then because you spotted it and it looks like it's not a body in there, but you know it is because you finally spotted mass. it. And, just and then you look at all, all the other cars and you start noticing, well, holy shit, all the cars have a body in it. Weapons of mass destruction, man. Mass murder is what just happened. It's murder. This is just, oh yeah. This all right, so I'm here with three people up in Chico right now who have been experiencing the Paradise disaster, I guess we got to call it. And um, it's fresh. It just happened a few days ago. Uh, today is the tw 26th, I believe, 27th. I don't even know what day it is. Wednesday, 28th. Uh, and they're telling their stories about what they experienced. So, sir, if you could tell us, you, you were there for 50 hours, you said, trying to escape? Yeah, over 50 hours. I was trapped in the park. And, and when, when did you first realize that you were in trouble or that something was happening? Uh, when I got a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 did someone warn you that the fires were coming or did you have any warning at all? I knew it was coming, yeah, because I saw it first thing in the morning when I was coming down from cutting firewood with a friend of mine. We were out cutting firewood all night and on the way down I could see a smoke cloud coming over and I warned all my friends about it, woke them up, got them out of bed and saw it and then went down to Paradise to, that was in Miguelia, and then went down to Paradise to warn family members and stuff. And it, what time of night was that, do you think about it? Uh, it was early morning. Early morning, so break of dawn kind of thing? Yeah. Now just look at the fires here. And look at the trees. And also pay close attention to the power lines. and the poles on the power lines. This literally looks like it's on the power lines. The power lines are down. And that's where you see the fires. So did something travel through the power lines? Did something target the power lines? And this massive amount of energy just traveled and hit the different locations specifically that had electricity. There was no power, power shut off. There was no power, power shut off. Okay, and you were saying that you were there for 50 hours, and then once you got out, you were seeing that one lane road only? There was one lane right road? Before that, yeah, going through all the area, watching the fire at night and stuff, also noticed everything turning blue. Right. It was a blue color to everything. And, and you were saying that you were at the... Tell, tell, tell me the story about <laughs> being at the... Was it Kmart or Walmart? Kmart, yeah. We are down in Kmart, the... The fire had, hadn't even reached there yet. That's during the time of uh, warning everybody that the fire was coming. That happened before all this up in the lower part of Miguelia. So, so is this day up. one? So or be going guys. back in time on, on, on that. Okay. That was, uh, the fire hasn't even made it to Kmart yet. And none of the trees around Kmart are burnt except for one. And Kmart burnt down and that one tree that's burnt, it lit up on its own. That was the one that we have the picture of. I'm going to put in here behind the Kmart. Yeah. There's the one tree that it just exploded, just, you said? No, it ignited like super hot. And you saw it? Yeah. And then what, how did it happen? And then it jumped to the to the Kmart? Yeah, well, I didn't stick around for that part, but I assume that's what happened. Yeah, because, Kmart, because that's the only thing gone. that was burning next to Kmart. Did you hear anything? Did you just, notice any sounds or anything? Um, just crackling. Was the tree blue before it blew up? Yeah, that's why we were going to take a picture of it, because it turned really blue, 
and we we're going to take a picture of it, but it ignited before we even got a picture of it. Wow. So. And and you see the spark coming from that picture. There's no power lines know. behind there, huh? Because they're all out on the street. Yeah, it's all, all on the street. Yeah, yeah. The street. there's no transport. So this there. tree ignites for no reason. Just I mean, just spontaneous combust. Combust. Yeah. Uh, it's like super hot ignites. Like if there was a, like if the fire was right on it. Wow. And it looks like that picture though shows looks like sparks. Yeah, yeah. sparks out of it. I mean, it's like out of a tree. Hot. Sparks out of a tree. You couldn't out look yeah. at it neither. It would give you like. If you looked at the sun too long, it was like we did not, we did not expect it to come over as quickly as it did. And when it, it came over, it really was a wall of flame that came over the ridge. Wall of flame is something that they expected because of the winds watching as the, this was not at all what the firefighters had expected based on wind conditions and conditions on the ground. Wall of flame is something that they expected because of the winds. We did not. We did not expect it to come over as quickly as it did. Wall of flame is something that they expected because of the winds. Good grief, would you look at that. That is another, it's we're beginning to form one of those flame tornadoes that we're seeing yesterday. And then the canyons around it, you get one of the little wind tunnels, which may be in the front of us. One I spray local leader went as City. far to say that in all of his years, he has never seen so many fires break out in one small area like he did yesterday. He find, finds it highly questionable. And Julie, today is supposed to be another red flag warning day. So the beginning of what is proving to be a catastrophic fire season in California. The fire chief there says he has never seen such extreme fires this early in his nearly three decades of fire. One of the most intense uh, feelings of heat that I've ever felt. It's easily burning over a thousand degrees right here. This is perfect fuel for this fire. Um, it's this is this is the uh, this is a fire that really just kind of decided to pick and choose houses that ran. Passing cars, even twisting this steel pipe around a tree like a pretzel. Knowledge, freedom, uncertainty, and the brutal truths of reality. Living the truth of reality is so much harsher and more difficult. Thank you for watching and much love to you all.